Hi, and my name is Kieran. I'm from Woodruff School, which is in Lyme Regis, and in February 2013, 16 students from years 9 to 12 came together to learn recording, research and interviewing skills so that we could record stories with older people from the town about their memories of growing up and working in Lyme Regis. Henry, Eddie, Reuben and myself, Harry, from Year 11, interviewed Ken Gollop. We were keen to talk to Ken about his family's fishing heritage, how the war affected the fishing industry and his memories about growing up in Lyme Regis. So how was the fishing industry affected by the war and how were your family affected? Well, of course, the war, you see, prevented a lot of people from going fishing. And, of course, being in the English Channel, it was a battle zone. So all the bigger fishing things, like the Brixham Fleet and things like that, they were very restricted on where they could go. So this actually gave the sea a rest for five years. And directly after the war, you saw lobsters three times the size you normally see them. You would see darn great cod and skate of a hundred pounds because they hadn't been caught. They were allowed to grow for an extra five years and reproduce for an extra five years. So after the war, anybody who went fishing was very nearly guaranteed of a catch of some sort or other. Mm. But the only problem was in Lyme itself, um, those that came back after the war didn't actually take up fishing. They didn't like the uh, the trouble of going to sea in the winter. Oh, it was a bloody hard job, job work fishing in the winter. Um, you've got to remember, in those days, you didn't have trawlers like you've got down there now. They were all open boats. You know the small type of trip boat you got now, that Harry May and that operate, with no wheelhouse whatsoever. That was all they had, and they were only going out for a day. And your only protection you had was a raincoat and a hat. I knew one bloke who used to take a brolly with him. One of the old blokes, it was quite a laugh. He had an umbrella stuffed under the seat just in case it rained too hard. But, but So it was very, very simple, very, very small scale. I mean, you had all the elements chucked at you, whether it was sunshine or, uh, or showers. There, well, that's my playground. And that, that's, that there is actually me sat on there. And these are the rowing boats we used to hire out, you see. And, of course, if you think, if you were a eight- or nine-year-old kid, mm. you could play with these boats when they're not being used. So you learned to row very early, and you row around back of uh, back beach and in amongst the rocks and that. You have a couple of lobster pots up there. You, you know, you can make money always sort of thing. But that was like toys to us. There are those Lyme Beach. Look. What were your yeah. earliest memories of tourism in Lyme? When war finished, they opened the beaches up because, of course, the beaches were all sealed off with barbed wire and pillboxes and machine gun points and things like that. And people started to come on holiday. And you would never believe Lyme would get so crowded. Of course, they all had to come by train or bus. Nobody had a car in those days. You know, you could walk from here down to, down to the town and you wouldn't see a car. You know, perhaps it was only about, I suppose, I'm not exaggerating, uh, there was probably only about 20 private cars in Lyme in those days. Lyme, and, and everybody hadn't had the freedom for six years. 1939 was the last time they could go on holiday. War was declared in the September, lucky enough for us, the end of the season. And war finished in Europe in the May of '45. But after they'd established D-Day and got halfway across Germany, they actually opened up the beaches. So for the whole summer of '45, and people were coming back from the war and you know, prisoners were being released and that. So you actually had people going on holiday and they'd come to line by train. And if you were up the station at 1 o'clock on a Saturday, or one o'clock any day, really, but on a Saturday, you would see 300 people get off that train and they would all come and stay in a guest house or a hotel in Lyme. And that was another way we made money. We used to go up there with old prams and our trucks and that, and we would carry the suitcases down to the hotels or the boarding houses for these visitors. And you would get threepence a suitcase generally. And they were all grateful for that because if they had to walk from a station where... Travis Perkins is now, down to Broad Street with a heavy suitcase. They'd know at the time they got down to 
down there, you know. So they were grateful for somebody with a with a pair of trucks or an old pram, and they could wheel it down for you. And um, I mean, the whole town blossomed, and we sort of were amazed at all these people, you know. All we'd seen for the last well, the last eighteen months before the war finished was Yanks, because after they'd come here and done their training, they went off to war, came back here and recuperated in the the military hospital at Axminster. So there's always Yanks about then. But to see all these people and real people, mums, dads, grannies, grandfathers, on the floor on the on the beaches was fantastic. Because we hadn't seen people on the beaches uh, during the war. But it was a mass of people that suddenly appeared in nineteen forty five. And we already got the boats down on the beach and we're letting out boats left, right and the centre and Lime in the forties. Um was a, a good place to be in business. This lady here, I took her out and I took her grandchildren out. That one and that one, that's man and wife there. So that's how families go on, you know, string of mackerel. How special was lying to me? Very, very. Because I've got a good idea of my past it's given me a good living. It's given me a good family. I've met a lot of people. I've grown up with a lot of people who I still respect and and care for, and they care for me. And I don't think you could have a better place.